Okay, well, I got some rather hateful comments uh, about who Mystery Babylon is and people telling me they wanted to send me documents as well. Um, but the hateful remark I removed because it was very hateful and supposedly from a Christian who knows it all, um, doesn't know what the scripture says, doesn't know Israel's history, and yet is saying awful things to me about um, trying to lead people astray and stuff, which is totally bogus. I would never, ever try to do that. And I would only try to tell something that was truth from the scriptures. There's a lot of um, videos that they're watching from so-called watchmen, um, some of which are wrong videos that are people's opinions and not scriptural. Um, I wanted to just quickly discuss a few reasons why America and New York City are not Mystery Babylon. And I guess the first thing to say is that Daniel, the prophet, was a prince of Judah. And at the time that he wrote the prophecy, he was writing about Jerusalem. He was praying for Jerusalem, the restoration of his people that had sinned against God. God said that they played the scarlet harlot against him. I gave many, many scriptures detailing how Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon and her ancient monarchy, and that this is going to be resurrected in the last days. They're going to put a king on the throne that is claiming to be from um, David's lineage. And it all has to do with Israel and Jerusalem. The Old Testament, it has nothing to do with the church and the church fulfilling that. Um, I want to say that America was not even a country, not even anywhere near being a country when Daniel wrote the prophecy. Okay, that's clue number one. Um, clue number two being that Daniel was a prince of Judah and he was basically writing the prophecy about that his ancestor, the Messiah, would be the one to open the, the scroll that was sealed. And that's what's happening in the book of Revelation is the Messiah of the same lineage of David is opening that scroll, revealing the judgments and the wrath of God, okay, and the wrath of the Lamb in the first half of it. It is a seven-year time, and that is in Daniel and uh, I believe it's Daniel 9, 27, if you want to see the seven years laid out there. When it's talking about mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, it was Jerusalem that's the mother of us all. Because where things are going to end is in Jerusalem, the kingdoms of this world are going to come to an end in Jerusalem, not America. So America has nothing to do with Mystery Babylon. However, as I stated before, God was so angry with his people, Israel and Judah, and their monarchies that he brought a sword against them and the people and the temple, and they were dispersed all over the world to all the continents. So now the continents also have elements of Mystery Babylon in them. But ultimately, Jerusalem was the first one and God's people were even rebelling against him in the wilderness. And he almost destroyed them, but he saved a few righteous people and let them go into the promised land. So think about the fact that it says that Mystery Babylon is a city, not a country. And this city is the one in the last days right before Jesus comes. This will be where the one world religion will be, where persecution against Jesus will be, where the two witnesses are killed in the streets of Jerusalem. That is not America, people, that is Jerusalem. These people, these rabbis of the ultra-Orthodox party want to put that bill through, which Netanyahu has said he's not gonna let pass. Um, 
at least not right now, it's not going to pass, but wait till they put the king on, on the throne and he has his say about everything he wants to implement. And things like that will be passed. It will be the time of Jacob's trouble because the people will have no say. They will not be able to vote. They will not be able to do anything when they put the king on the throne, which they are preparing. Right now, as we speak this day, Benjamin Netanyahu went to the UK meeting with Rishi Sunak, and it's all about, you know, they don't want Iran to get the nuclear bomb in a, a couple of days. Um, but it's all preparing for the fact that Rishi Sunak is going to go to Israel's 75th birthday on May 14th, and probably since the coronation ceremony of King Charles III happens, he probably would attend and go to Israel too. Now they've already made a Messiah crown for the so-called anointed one, and they've already created a Torah scroll, and they have said that they are going to give that to the Messiah, the King, as a gift when he comes to visit there. So it's not somebody from in Israel. And the other thing too is I would like for people that keep peddling that Yannicka Hanukkah thing, that guy is not the Messiah, he's no king, he's no prince. And that whole thing was trumped up by a bunch of Christians and there is an article saying that that was a fake story and that he's just a popular rabbi, they have no intention of making him their Messiah. So I'd like to put that to rest because people keep saying that to me and it's like, no, no. Um, the whole thing about America being Mystery Babylon has nothing to do with America. And, you know, America is one of the nations in the Bible, if you're wondering where America is. So the whole thing started out in the Garden of Eden, which was there in Jerusalem. And then the people were driven out of the garden. And then Babylon was set up with a tower to try to reach unto God. Okay, so in the end, they're going to try to build a temple to reach unto God right there on Holy Mount Moriah. And the Turks said that, with the Sanhedrin members, said that it was going to be a mosque. So it's going to be a one world religion right there. And they want to make the Sanhedrin, as I've told you a million times, the Supreme Court of the world with the Sanhedrin at the head. So they will be appointing a king because they are the ones that have the power to appoint the king. He doesn't have to be uh, in a lineage there in Israel. I don't believe that because the Sanhedrin votes the king in, they can take someone and vote him in. Um, so basically what I'm saying is Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, and Jerusalem is the mother of us all, not America. America has nothing to do with it. Um, of course, America is going to come under God's judgment for the evil that's in America. But you have to remember, this is one of the places where the gospel goes forth into all the world. So I wish people would stop bashing our country, frankly, and start praising our country for the godly people that are in it, that fight horrible bills up there in Washington, D.C. right now. They're trying to protect the parents to have say over their children and what they see and do in schools um, because these idiots in power are trying to undo everything. They're trying to really just destroy this country from within. Um, so there is judgment that is coming for all the nations. You know, I mean, you'd have to punish India first. Really, they have all these gods there. So I just don't buy into that. And um, judgment is coming. The people left behind are going to be under God's wrath because they refuse to believe the truth and believe that Jesus came and died and bore the wrath upon his own flesh to save us from the wrath to come. Um, the whole thing has to do with going back to the place of the Garden of Eden. This is why Jesus died in God's holy mountain and he was resurrected in the holy mountain and came out of the tomb in God's holy mountain, holy Mount Moriah. That's where the almond tree was that was budding, that was sent to me when I had my divine revelation and wrote the book for eight years 
was seven years with an eighth year editing. And many, many revelations were given to me that were true. They're not opinion. They're not like any other thing that you've heard. And the only way you, you can know is if you read these things and you see for yourself. Now, the, the thing that is, is like, God told the end from the beginning. So at the beginning you had God and his divine presence there in the garden, which is in Jerusalem, okay? So that's where um, Jesus as the Messiah, our salvation, Yeshua, he died, was buried and resurrected to redeem us back to that garden, that same place. And he had to do it there because he's bringing us back into the new Jerusalem, which is gonna be a creation of newness and everything will be in a glorified state at that point. So, you know, while he scattered the people away from Jerusalem in the beginning, in the end, he's bringing us all back to Jerusalem to live in his divine presence as it was in the beginning. This is why America is not Mystery Babylon. It's Jerusalem, the place of the Garden of Eden, and he's bringing us back into the garden, into the eternal promised land through our salvation, through our Yeshua. And uh, I, I just want people to try to, to think about this and understand it from a historical Israel point of view and that they're going to reestablish that monarchy in the end. And those Jews that are up there, the ultra-Orthodox, they're trying to pass all of these um, bills that are crazy. They're just prejudice against everyone that isn't them. So they are the ones that are gonna fight against the two witnesses. The two witnesses are going to be killed for the very fact, as I told you, that they want to implement that law into law to forbid anyone even speaking Jesus name or you know just spreading the gospel or sharing the gospel you can't even speak to your friend or email or text or anything in that bill right now they're not passing the bill but all they have to do is put the king in place and the king would go along with those ultra orthodox and I believe those ultra-Orthodox are in the Sanhedrin that want to proclaim themselves as the world court. And of course, um, I've told people over and over and over about, you know, the whole thing about the Noahide laws and trying to implement that from the Talmud and all. Um, I don't really need to go into that. I don't really want to discuss it. And I have said, if you want to see an excellent video, go to Stephen and Yana Ben-Noon to see their video on that subject. Um, so they want to implement all of these things. So they want to remove Jesus, say he's idolatrous. Well, they're committing idolatry by invoking the crescent moon god, uh, the Sanhedrin with the Turk, Adnan Oktar. That's what they did. So I hope you see that when God declares the end from the beginning, that where it's gonna wind up is in Jerusalem, and that's where everything's gonna be fulfilled to make the divine presence of God to come back down and destroy the kingdoms that are there, the kingdom that they set up of supposedly the throne of David. And the Lord is gonna come down and his divine presence is going to bring the wrath because they have refused him as their king. And God's given them 2,000 years and they're still refusing him. Don't even want his name spoken. Can you imagine the place where God said his name would be forever? And it is there. It is in Jerusalem. It is where Jesus rose from the grave. So this denial is gonna get them in big trouble. They're gonna cause trouble for all the other Jews in Israel. The women, the reform, the uh, conservative Jews, they are persecuting already. And they wanna put these draconian laws into place. So I hope you see that, you know, that temple is gonna be destroyed, basically. The Lord's gonna come down, he's gonna destroy everything. It's gonna be the rock shattering Nebuchadnezzar statue. And 
Um, this is why Mystery Babylon the Great and the Scarlet Harlot, which God said that his people played the Scarlet Harlot against him. They were clothed with purple. They grew up wearing purple. They grew up wearing scarlet. The kings of Israel that sinned against God, they wore these colors. Now, I know the whole story, uh, Dave Hunt had a thing about the Catholic Church, but you have to remember that this goes back before the Catholic Church ever came about. And I gave all the scriptures in the video where I revealed who Mystery Babylon the Great was. And I was shocked when God showed me from the scriptures. So, if you want to see that video, please go watch it. Um, I think it was called Mystery Babylon the Great Revealed or something like that. Um, so where things started is where they're going to end right there in Jerusalem. And the Lord is going to return. And his judgment is coming. The Old Testament and the New Testament all had to do with the Lord coming and they would not accept him. A lot of them would, but a lot of them wouldn't. And the Pharisees and Sadducees came to him and they would not repent. They would not take a mikvah in the Jordan River when John the Baptist came to prepare them to meet the Lord. And you know, uh, when the Lord came down on Mount Sinai, the people were to wash their clothes and be ready to meet the Lord in three days. Okay, so that's what Jesus, um, you know, told the people that he would be resurrected three days and three nights. And the people were to be prepared, you know, for his resurrection. Um, people were resurrected out of their graves at that time. So the Lord is coming back. And the whole events of the end in Revelation have to do with Israel, the restored monarchy, which was the deadly wound in the head with a sword, because he brought the sword against the monarchy of ancient times. They didn't have a king for all these centuries, okay? So they're going to put this king on the throne, and that is going to be restored. So I'm trying to explain this in the best way I can. and. That really is the best way to understand that in the beginning was the Garden of Eden in Jerusalem and it ends in the Garden of Eden in Jerusalem that's going to be basically resurrected from a cursed state into a glorified state. I hope I answered some questions that people had in understanding where I'm coming from. Um, I gave all the scriptures showing you from the scriptures how I came to this conclusion. And when you realize that the whole thing is about returning to the Garden of Eden-like state for God's divine presence to dwell with us, that is what the Messiah was accomplishing. That's why the curtain with the two cherubim were torn, making the way straight through to the true heavenly Ark of the Covenant, which he is. He dwells, um, you know, on his throne. And that's his throne chair. So, we're going back. He made the way to go back. He made the way because he's the tree of life, and we are to take and eat of the fruit of the tree of life and live forever. So, I hope this explains it. Uh, the people that were, well, it was just basically one woman that was just bashing me, telling me to repent, that I didn't know what I was talking about, that... Mystery Babylon is America. Well, America did not exist when Daniel wrote the prophecy. So that should be your first clue. Second clue, you know, just being that, you know, this is what I, re I realized in Revelation 13, it's the restored monarchy of Judah and Israel. And as far as the prodigal son um, story, to me, the one that went off and fattened himself is the ten tribes of Israel. That's the son that was the wandering son.
The tribe of Judah, on the other hand, and those kings, they stayed in Jerusalem and they held the monarchy there. And they were ticked off. Sorry, a motorcycle went by. They were ticked off when the wandering 10 tribes of Israel were blessed and welcomed back and yet they stayed faithful. Judah and Benjamin stayed faithful to God. Although they sinned against him, they were like the, the son that stayed there and, you know, said, you know, why are you doing this for this wandering son, you know? So basically you have the monarchy there. You have Judah and you have the 10 northern tribes that went wandering off. But God's going to gather them back to himself and he's going to have a righteous remnant. So we have to count on him through his Holy Spirit to reveal himself to them in due time when he chooses when he wants to. Um, the testimony I have in the book he gave me absolutely reveals him to them. And there's no doubt about it. There's no other testimony. I mean, it comes from the Bible. I've got thousands of scriptures in the book written out by hand and proving all things. I hope you understand from this why it ends in Jerusalem and not America and not New York City and not Rome. We're going back to the Garden of Eden and he's going to take us there because we are following after him right now and we're going to enter his gates when he opens the door. And we're going to go through those gates at the sound of the fanfare trumpet blast of the king. So we're listening, we're watching, we're waiting. Passover is coming. The time when he performed this divine miracle of making the way back to the Garden of Eden. So that's where we're headed, people. And I hope to God that the people that chastise me and said hateful things about me will take a listen to this and understand that I'm just trying to tell you the truth so you're not duped and you're put on some bunny trail over somebody's opinion about America and New York City or Rome being Mystery Babylon. They all have elements of Babylon in them and they will be judged. But the whole thing comes back to the place where God is going to descend with his divine presence where the Garden of Eden had been that was cursed. Jesus reversed the curse they wouldn't accept their king, so now 2,000 years goes by and he's gonna come again at the end of the seven year time of Jacob's trouble. And these ultra-Orthodox rabbis are gonna create the trouble with all of these bills that are gonna be implemented by their earthly king, the last king that'll sit upon the throne ever and King Jesus will reign forever. I hope this blesses you, I hope it's clear um, anyway, I pray that you'll uh, press the like button, you'll subscribe, you'll share, and that you will support this channel. I can't make it without people's help right now. I'm trying, and God is busy behind the scenes trying to show me which doors he wants to open. I have some things in the works, and I'm praying and I ask you to pray that they open so this can go worldwide. And I just pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you'll open people's eyes to the truth and they will see that Jerusalem is what happens in the last days. And that's where the wrath of God is coming because they will not accept him as king. I have no idea what keeps flashing. The divine power of God, maybe. That's about the third or fourth time there's nothing reflecting or anything. Well, maybe it's lightning in the air. I don't know. So I'll talk to you later. I hope this was explanatory. In the other video, I give you exact scriptures where the Lord was showing me this piece by piece. And uh, at first, I couldn't even believe my eyes. But once you begin to realize where things began and where they end, then it's like, oh, the veil's lifted, you see the truth. And that's all I want to present on my channel is the truth. So with that, I'll just say good night and or good afternoon, whatever it is, your time. Thank you so much for listening.
God bless everybody. And we're coming up on Passover. And I'm trying to hold on. And I just hope it's this year. I hope he comes, you know, with the king about ready to be coronated. And to think that Benjamin Netanyahu is right there with Rishi Sunak. And then in May, Rishi Sunak's going there. And they just signed a seven-year agreement with Israel and the UK that includes security issues, amongst other things, health care and all these other trade and tech. Um, that was in my last two videos. That this, if it includes eventually the building of the third temple for the Jews, the ultra-Orthodox or whatever, then this would turn into the covenant with many but it has to include the piece of the land I believe I said it was a land lease and that from the scripture in 2nd Thessalonians so um, until I talk to you next time I hope this clarified everything all right well Shalom for now nice being out here under this tree we've had snow on and off the last couple of days so I think we're going to get more snow. <laughs> okay, well, there's another flash. I don't know what that is. I guess the Lord is happy about the video. <laughs> All right, well, see you later. Good night. Good afternoon. Shalom.